Yes. Right now they have 330. Yes. Are we going to tell 90 kids they can't come? Well, what you would do right now is Penridge would give them some of our slots. Yeah, no. But if we, <laughs> well, no, that's what exa actually happens currently, right? But, if, it, but doesn't that also shift the percentage? So Quaker Tenders Oh, sure, as soon as you do that. Right. And so if you're operating with the current formula, that makes a difference. But if you're operating with the eligible enrollment, it makes no difference because the numbers relate back to who's in the high school, not who's at the Votech. Because the quota is actually in the Articles of Agreement, Joan, is why I'm using the word quota. It is up there, but I mean, the reason I use that because it already exists for the individual programs in the Articles of Agreement. I don't want to, I brought them. And then the other, so these other schools, you said that there are some uh, tech schools that use this, mm -hmm. but yes. are the schools more equitably sized? That I can't tell you. I mean, there are, there are 29, I believe, vocational, um, independent vocational schools across the state, ones that, uh, you know, comp not comprehensive ones, because areas like State College High School has a comprehensive, they run their vocational program in their high school. Uh, but most of the districts obviously do what we do, which is uh, group together and send students there part time. Although middle box is not that. Middle box is full time, right? That's a comprehensive school, but although it's sent from various districts. But the funding formulas are all different. Well, not all different, but they're numbers of different versions, right? So this is a version. The one we use is a version, and there are other versions, right? Okay, yeah. I, I was just wondering because our numbers are really far apart. I mean, that yeah. might Yes, and it is. Might yeah. work well, people who are and frankly, size, but. Joan. The reason that State College area is running a comprehensive high school vocational program is exactly that. They were in, a, in Center County. There were five school districts. The five are extraordinarily disparate in size. State College area, I believe, is a 6A, and I'll talk in the academic or athletic world because that's the easiest differentiation, is a 6A school like Penridge is. But Belfont, the school that I went to for high school, is a 3A school. Penns Valley is, I believe, a 2A school. So Penns Valley has 1,700 students. State College area has 7,500 students. So it's this same deal, maybe not quite as uh, disparate. But what State College did was they were providing the bulk of the funding, and eventually they said, we're not doing it, and they walked away. And it caused a real upheaval, as you can imagine, for the other four schools as well as for State College. But were they providing the bulk of the students? No. Oh, okay. Can you explain? No, it was the, well, oh, okay. and the reason I say that, Mrs. Dole Katie, is that, as you can imagine, State College area is loaded with professors, to, for lack of a better, oh. so their students, there's a lot of um, pressure for their students to go to college, I and I would guess 90-some percent of them do, so most of them do not okay. go to the vocational school, or did not go to the vocational school, so that was part of the problem, too. Can you explain to me with the animal tech program, since, there, mm -hmm. since there's, we're turning away lots of students, how do they decide which, what is, what is the process for deciding which students they take and which students they okay. don't take? Do they cap it for different school districts? Do we each there are quotas for different school districts, but first of all, you take the students who are already enrolled in the program. Okay. So there will be 10th graders, 11th graders, 12th graders who are enrolled in the program. Then you look at all the new students and their choices, and they make multiple choices, as I remember. Maybe it's three, maybe mm -hmm. it's five. I can't remember what the number is. You, three. Three, okay. So they make three choices, and if they could get into their first choice, uh, and as I say, there is a quota, and the, the, in this case, they trade off. That is, uh, if Quakertown doesn't have enough students going into that program, then Penn Ridge gets more slots, or vice versa. So what is the quota based on? Is it a third, a third, and a third, or do? Or is no, it no, it's on, it's on the ADMs. It's on the ADMs, just like, just like the funding is. I couldn't get in to Animal Tech when I was in ninth grade, and they told me it was because it was first come, first serve. So even though you might have a student who's academically here, if this person academically you put their paperwork in first, that's who got in. But in theory, that's what it's, I was told. yeah, no, I and know. But in theory, right. it's in the, it's, a, and I believe that's what they're trying to <laughs> but operate. But she is over enrolled this year. I think she has twenty one in her yes, AM that's, and twenty two in her PM. That's the other thing. Sometimes she teachers will take, will take as many as twenty three on a twenty mm -hmm. number quota if they're willing to do that. 
So then the, the 61, 46 of them get to participate. The others go into places like our landscaping program, um, you know, in the same building, has some interaction, and sometimes they'll wait and transfer. Sometimes they'll say, I like this better, or I'm, I'm happy here. So yeah, that's a, that's a whole different issue, so I think, enrollment. So based on this new formula, if, if this was approved, um, essentially, Penn Ridge, because we have a bunch of extra slots, we could we would essentially take over the animal tech program because our if, if well, we you get half of it. Them, we'd, you, we'd you get, them all, you get half. Town, <coughs> their kids wouldn't even be able to get in. They'd be dropping their. Money. You could you would get it half absolutely yeah. I mean, many of the students who apply at the Votech and take the three different, not all get their first choice obviously. Um, I think this year. 12 of the programs are fully enrolled, some number, I forget the number, of the 19, 20 that we have. We also have some that are under enrolled. Uh, a couple that we talked about earlier in the year that we're considering modifying or sunsetting and starting a different program uh, because of chronic under enrollment. And there is, that's also part of the articles. The articles of agreement are quite comprehensive and quite complex if you really dig into them, right? So this is who, just one piece of it. Who is in favor of this new formula and who wants to propose it and get it approved? Who, who's Both Palisades, the, the two representatives, we sit as a committee of three. Mr. Hollowell, who has is been, is the only person at the VOTEC who's served longer than I have, right? He's been there 25 years maybe, maybe more, a long time. and. Um, one and off president of the Palisades Board, and um, Mr. Uh, Klein, who is the um, president, current president of the Quaker Town Board, and we're sitting together to try to hammer out some agreement, right? Um, they have both proposed this. I said, I don't think the Pedridge Board will even consider this, but the point of negotiating is you have to find out what the Penridge Board will consider it and what you would like me to go back with uh, to them. I mean, I can say, we want the current formula, and that will exist because it takes all three boards to agree to a change. So that's that's the issue. I guess my I guess here's where I this is the part that I don't understand, right? We essentially when you say that, right? But it's essentially been changed without doing that in the past. It's right. been changed twice without proper approval. So really, we should be approving the right-hand column that you showed because that's what but nobody the will do formula it. actually <laughs> says. Well, right, but Are you going to vote for a $338,000 increase next year I mean, or whatever if, it was? If, if, that's what our, if that's what our bill is, but if you go back to that slide, one of the things that you, you can see is even though we are, even though we're taking a substantial, we're, we're dedicating a substantial amount of the fund balance each year, to the budget, it's not decreasing much. So we're we're over. Obviously, we're getting in more revenues, or we're not spending as much as we're proposing we're going to spend. So what makes sense is to look at instead of what's be you know let, let's 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 find where that middle is and what we're actually spending, and then increase above the Act One cap that we currently have, increase that cap to. To a, you know whatever number, what is it? One percent, I think, is what we're underfunding it. So if you increased it by one percent, you wouldn't keep borrowing money from fund balance. On paper, it would look like you are, but then when when you balance it all out at the end, you really aren't because when you look at the numbers as they come in, you're not really spending the money that you're dedicating to fund from from fund balance to the budget. Well, we are okay. currently. That that's been the problem for years. We did well, right, not do like that, one, despite the. But, act. but we're we're at about one percent, aren't we? Isn't it about one percent that we're actually taking out of fund? Two hundred thousand dollars. So one percent of what? Of, I'm I'm thinking one percent of the the. Last year's numbers was roughly two hundred thousand dollars decrease in the fund balance. The fund balance was three point four something. Now it's down to. Three point almost three, right. but so 3 that was the decrease. The budget, if you're talking about percentage of the total budget, the budget is eight point eight million dollars more or less. So that's considerably more than one percent. I, I don't know where your one percent number comes from. Okay, so 
you went your the fund balance was 3.4 base almost 3.5 in 2017 mm -hmm. and it's down to 3.3 something well, now so it's oh, so let's say 3.4 right so you're talking about yes right yeah and so that's that's what I'm talking about. You're only if if you look at that hundred thousand dollars, that that hundred thousand dollar number, and you raised that Act One cap, so that you weren't borrowing that hundred thousand dollars, you it would be a middle ground. You'd still be using the fair funding formula, but you wouldn't be paying three hundred thousand dollars this year, and Quaker Town paying eight hundred thousand dollars this year. It would be a hundred thousand dollars dispersed equitably through the current funding formula. Okay. Let me finish and now I'll show you what some of the other proposals are. Okay. So this is the using the ADM enrollment funding, the current funding formula for the 1920 year. This is what will presumably happen based on the enrollment over at the vocational school. And what you see here is this is changed from past years. Both um, Penridge and Palisades will see an increase in district payment uh, next year, presumably. Quakertown will see a decrease, and it's because of the, how the number enrollment numbers have changed and how those, that has affected this five-year rolling average. The numbers are not great. Palisades would actually, uh, and I misspoke, Palisades would be the one that would uh, assume the 2.3%, the Act 1 increase, because they would see the biggest change, so to speak, even though there's smallest numbers and smallest school. Um, Penridge would be in the middle, but both would be increasing, whereas Quakertown would be decreasing, which has not been the typical pattern. The typical pattern has been one has increased and two have decreased, but in this case, it would be two increase and one decrease. But that's what this would look like projected to this coming year. So it's a five-year average? With the five-year average, yes. Um, this is the opposite. This is the en eligible enrollment funding projections for this coming year. And you can see this is what it does to, uh, and this is why Penridge is not going to agree to this, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using this just to show you what the situation is between the two, if you will, extremes or between the two versions, whatever you want to call them. So. Here's why I wanted to continue, because this is there are other things that have been proposed, either a hybrid model, some sort of combination of the ADM rolling average and the eligible enrollment, a phase-in of, uh, of a change, whatever it is, over five years or ten years, like we do some other things, to minimize the impact of it. An increase, what you talked about, I believe, uh, the increase to the cap above Act 1, say 1% 1 a year or 2% above the cap, until we equilibrate at the reasonable numbers. And that would be obviously require an incremental increase, something above 2.3% next year if you were to implement it that soon. But these are other options that I think should be considered that we haven't really talked about and I haven't asked because it is, I think, something that I no business manager enjoys churning through all those numbers when they're all, as, as you said, hypothetical, right? But um, so that's where we stand, um, as I say. I'm looking to go back with these folks and uh, have further discussions about uh, if you want me to say absolutely no way at any time ever uh, of the eligible enrollment, I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure that we know what, where we stand. But, but to that point, that's what's on the table right now. That's what's where been proposed by the other two, okay. uh, the representatives from the other two sending. Okay. The whole, the Joint Operating Committee has not no, discussed no, this yet. Right, so it's just the three of us. Your other two counterparts. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. And we're trying to. Yeah, yeah. 41% yeah. increase? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Can I just I, ask you, I when you talked about that $300,000 increase for us and the $800,000 increase, I'm trying to find it on here from Quaker there. Um, So that was for this year? That would be for this this year, yes. So that's already passed. For the 18 year, yes. So and it's then, not the calculation. Because that's, that, those are the numbers that we know as factual, right? The right. next years are projected, right, kind of thing. So because here's the other caveat that I should tell you or condition. The ADM numbers aren't even the ones that are, are in the fall or October 1 like everybody else uses. Believe it or not, they're the spring numbers. <laughs> oh. So 
it, again, okay. that's what was done way back when, and it's tough to change all of these things. But so they, so we won't know what the ADM number for this year right. is until the spring for each of the three sending districts. So the, so what you were looking at for this year was, is, is just a hypothetical at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is what we think might happen. It's not what will happen, it's what we think will happen based on the numbers of the enrollment this fall. But the enrollment that counts is what those numbers are when spring comes around. So Quakertown wouldn't be looking at an $800,000 based on this because they're the lowest. So if we pay- They would see a, a, a decrease, yes. They no, would not I be- mean, I mean, if you took away this, if you, if you took oh. away the cap. If you, uh, I know what you're asking then. If you used the without cap for this year, no, it wouldn't be $800,000. I don't know what it would be. It would be less, but it wouldn't be 800,000. That's correct. And even though Palisades is paying the most, um, it's a 2.3% increase on what they were paying, right? So, yes, absolutely. And they were paying the least. So two they were paying, this year they're paying $752,000 and change. Right, so 2.3% increase for them is far different than a 2.3% increase for Quakertown. So when we cap it. Oh, absolutely. So when we're capping it in terms this of artificial cap, when, when that largest cap falls on Palisades, then we're really underfunding it because you're capping it at their number, and their the two percent of their number is not nearly what two percent of capping it at our number. Well, you number. you can see what happens in the overall number that down at the bottom where I put all three, right. the payment goes from uh, la this current year of six million twenty three thousand down to six million four thousand. I didn't put it on there, but I believe that number comes in at about seventy two percent of the total budgeted revenue and the biggest reason for that is because right now we're capping it Look, right now palisades falls into that highest category where the cap is the biggest reason is the act one the, the well, fact right, that nobody we, wants to exceed the act cap, one right but but when it when it when it falls in palisades lap because they're the smallest contributor and you're capping it at their two percent that's what's really hurting us this year because when you were capping it at Quakertown's two percent, that's a lot higher because two percent of Quakertown's number is a lot more than two percent of Palisades' number. That's true, but every year you'll see. Look at the decrease here, across this slide from two. It's the third line down, third set of numbers down. The decrease has been every year: six point four eight two, six point four one four, and so on. Right? Those numbers decrease regardless of who's absorbing the increase, but right? It's, but it's going to be a more drastic jump. It may be a more drastic jump, but it, it drops every year because of the way this formula shakes out. How receptive is, because Quakertown, it sounds like, has not been receptive to pay more than the Act 1 index for an increase for them. How receptive is Palisades to pay more than the Act 1 index? Because if they're the ones who are at the top this time, it's really, it's really about them committing to paying more than the I, I certainly can't speak for Palisades. My guess is they're not because they have run their budgets um, not either at zero or at numbers. This year, I believe their increase was something on the order of a half percent. Mm -hmm. So they try to stay under the Act 1 index um, overall. And as Mr. Daubert will tell you, I mean, this is contributory. Now, I will also tell you that the Penridge contribution at one time was almost $3 million. Currently it's $2.2 .2 million. Less, not, not including the debt service, which is you know obviously part of what we pay, but it's a separate account kind of thing. So it has dropped dramatically because, I mean, we have benefited in the sense of how much we pay. It has not benefited the VOTEC, obviously. It's been a double-edged sword, in my opinion. Well, from my perspective, when you ask what we want you to tell them when you go well, back, that, that's what I'm... I would tell them this funding formula is fair. Let's work on the one that's not. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sure and, and that's a, that's even out of the scope of what we're I'm doing. Right? Meeting, so I'll say it myself. I you, and mind, you're but. welcome to say it, but I am telling you that is not part of our charter currently, okay. right? You, you so, want to adapt. But I, and I'm, so, I'm comfortable tackle a different that, question. I'm comfortable no, that, raising that cap, but really we should be paying what we're supposed to be paying and there shouldn't be a gentleman's agreement. Why don't, why don't, we, why don't we phase in 
you, one of your options was phasing in item one of these things. Why don't we phase in actually getting to the point where we just pay our bill instead of yeah. going through well, that's, the gymnastics? Well, that's certainly I something that I'm more than willing to advocate for. That would be, that would, that would be what I would. Okay. Because if that's what the majority of the board wants to do, that I'd be happy to do because I think that's the best way of going to. I don't think mm -hmm. any district's going to accept right. a huge bump in any given right. year. Right. They're just not exactly. going to do it. And since we all have, as I say, basically vetoed powder, power in terms of changing the funding formula, um, then it's not going to happen unless we all you know, are at least reasonably comfortable with the direction we're going in. Mm -hmm. I think we should have a gentlewoman's agreement. Gentle okay. <laughs> let's make that Here's up. That's the first part of your question. Oh, okay. Is there anybody here that's in favor of going to the eligible enrollment model? No. Uh, no. no. Mm -mm. All right. I, I certainly didn't Sorry. expect that. No. Right. I, yeah. So that's unanimous. Right. So no, and that's, that's part of the, the yes. issue. Right. Um, I kind of like the thought, mm -hmm. um, Joan, of you know, phasing over five years that we just pay the bill. Pay the bill. Pay the bill. Just, wait, so, well, right. I, I mean, I is that what, so if that's we have 38% of the something? students, we should pay 38% of the bill, is that what? Yeah. It should well, that's be. that's what the funding formula says. Yes. So what? I should know this, but what is our, what is our um, budget of the tech school? The eight point eight million, give or take. Ru roughly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the general be... fund, Katie, I'm talking because yeah. the the overall budget's like ten million, but that includes things like the Perkins funding and um, you know the interest on the capital projects, and there are other components to that. Okay. But the 8.8 is the general fund, which is what this fund is. And that's what they need, is the 8.8. Well, so if we paid 38% of the 8.8, it would be just over $3 million. Something like that. Yeah, I'd have to calculate it. But it would be something on that order, right? Right. So, and then Quaker Town should pay their 46% of the 8.8. Yes. That seems fair. I agree. Yeah. But then the problem is, is do they discourage kids from going to the tech school, right? They might. You can't, you know. There have been, I mean, one of the reasons that Quakertown got into the situation of absorbing the increase every year was because they changed their philosophy of who goes to the vote tag, Right. Which any school district and, can do. Right. But then they didn't want to pay for it. Well, that's what, that's Nobody what wants I, to pay for that's it. That's what I'm asking problem. about, yeah. your eligibility. I mean, who, what grade levels go at Penridge? At Penridge, primarily 10 through 12. 10 through 12. And Palisades, primarily. 10 through 12? Primarily. And so Quakertown has chosen chosen to include more students. There was a time when we sent 9 through 12 as well. Mm -hmm. And well, then, of I course, do. we I, had more students. I didn't know that. But so it, it, I see that's a That's an educational philosophy. True. That's a different true. issue. Right. I mean, I, uh, it's related, but sense. it's a different issue, right? It, I think it does but contribute to it. a lot of them start in ninth grade, right? A lot of our students start I'm in ninth not, grade. I would not say a lot. There are students but who they do. Can. They can't. They can't. Because we got rid of our career choices program yes. when you go in and you yes. check out the different ones. When you, where you basically sample okay. a lot of different mm -hmm. programs to try to decide where you go. You know, that that we decided against. Right. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? So Quaker Towns jump would be eight hundred thousand dollars in this one year. If if, if it were to be done, you know. But once they make that jump, then in subsequent years they wouldn't see another is oh, no, it wouldn't be right. 800. Well, not unless their enrollment so, changed dramatically, and that's well, not going to happen. Yeah, okay, so that's why I would, no, it's I a, would it's be a, okay with them It's a it one-time it, dislocation, if you will. Yeah, okay. For all three skin school districts. You can just pay them. If we owe that much, yeah. that's a little bit of time to <sighs> get themselves ready to pay. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking three, maybe, you yeah. know, but... Yeah, Give them some time to work into paying yep. their bill, but with the understanding that, that it's to me it's obvious. It's like a no-brainer. Yeah. Just pay the bill. Yeah. Well, you know. I will tell you that the I first know. when Dr. Bolton looked at it, that was the first thing he said, right? Okay. We should be paying our bill. Oh. <laughs> yep. Well, no, I mean, it, and it's always interesting when an outsider, or someone who right. doesn't have any familiarity yeah. with it per <laughs> se, <laughs> comes and looks at it, especially someone who's yeah, analytical and says, we should be paying our bill, and I don't disagree. I, I think we have to realize that we're not paying our bill either. No, no, that's true. Right. We're all in that. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. 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 We all have to pay. Yeah. We all have a share of that liability, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be a million dollar increase to us as well. Right. So that's what I just looked at. Right. We spend two hundred, two point two additional money, and it would go up to like three something million. Yeah. Something like that. So we can all pay a third, a third, a third. 
Mr. Well, Hallowell might have a heart attack, though. Well, he will. Yeah. And and that that is another one of the funding formulas. Some districts do uh, pay per equal equal share, shares, right? Not something the Palisades would want to do, no. but it would benefit us and it would, wars, benefit, right? yeah, it would benefit, benefit Quaker Town. It's like, um, you know, the con with, with assessment of housing. Where I used to live, they, it was rolling assessment. Mm -hmm. So you weren't faced with this problem of all of a sudden having your taxes right. go up when you're, you know, a senior citizen. This is, it's the same idea to me. Just work people into it so that they can get the, right. the position of no. paying. What I'm happy to. to um, to work on that and advocate for that. That I think is the right way of going about it because I don't think we'll accept it otherwise unless we can do it incrementally. No, I think it's just going to be a problem after year after year after year. Well, it will be. It will be paying for Quaker Towns. That's not fair to our taxpayers. No, it's not. <laughs> I totally agree that is not fair to our taxpayers. What? The general, the general what? fund budget, 8.8 million? Yes. Give or take a. What? The general re revenue fund for next year for the 1920 year is projected as 10.1 million and change of which 8.86 .8 is the uh, budget without the debt service okay. I thought we were paying 2.2 million. We, I mean, something, uh, Sean could tell you exactly. But, uh, it is. It's just what it is. I know the real one's going to be. 2.2. It, yeah, two point. The budget for nineteen, the current year that we're in, is two from Penridge. The con contribution is two point two three nine. Everybody's going Quaker Towns is three point oh three two, and Palisades is the seven hundred and fifty two thousand. Right. So it's the split that, currently. Palisades will go to a little over a million, one point oh eight. Mm -hmm. It seems like the only fair and equitable way to put it. And, and the only thing that makes sense, because, I mean, we've been kind of fooling ourselves for all these years, mm -hmm. pretending like it doesn't actually, look, if you're going to have a, a tech school, and all three of you are saying we want to have this tech school and support right. the tech school, either pay for it, right. or what are, we, what are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. Pay for it or don't have it. So I would rather have it. Yeah, if we do that, everybody's in for some stinger shock. Well, so well, short-term or long-term, there's going to be an increase. Right. But if we phase, if you ease into it, then, yeah. and then once you get there, then you're not going to be... Well, you phased out the you, cap, you, right, the Act 1 cap. People are telling me it wouldn't be as dramatic, right, after you get yourself to the point, so... Okay, mm -hmm. so I think I have my marching orders. <laughs> you can make your uh, plea and... Don't get me involved in another committee, please. But uh, <laughs> I appoint Peter to yeah, the uh, funding for the committee for capital projects. I agree. I mean, and we, I mean, uh, most of us, I think, want to have this um, option for our students. And frankly, we have some very successful students, uh, like the young man who uh, from Penridge, actually, who yeah. won the. Uh, Second place at the skills. Dylan uh, Miller. Yeah, Dylan Miller's quite an incredible guy. Hopefully he got his ride on his Harley. I know they did <laughs> start it and drove it around. Well, he was supposed to get the first ride. Remember, he won the Harley for the mm -hmm. school, right? Mm -hmm. So um, they had promised him at one of our meetings that he would get the, get the first, first ride. ride. I don't know whether he did. I'll have to ask the question, right? Did somebody actually so, and what did we have? We had like 22 medalists at state. We had a lot, yeah. yes. We had a lot. We have had a lot most years. And, and we're a fairly right. small vocational school. There's certainly, like LCTI has 3,000 students. So we're competing against some in the state, not all. they have 13 all. sending districts. Of 17. 17. 17. Wow. Wow. Oh, it has to be a wonderful wow. time at every meeting, right? I can't Can you imagine? Even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
and having mm. districts like Allentown and Catasauqua and Whitehall and, and yeah. Lower Salkin and all sorts of different districts, right? Talk about diversity, right? Wow, yeah. That's diversity. East Penn, mm -hmm. you've got the whole collection there. Yeah. yeah so. Did, yeah. did um, Dr. Bolton give you any thoughts on his thoughts to share about this for tonight? Well, actually, um, Dr. Bolton and I have been invited to a meeting at the Tech School with the other business administrators and superintendents uh, to actually sit down and start to uh, talk about this. From our from our standpoint, also. Because so. yeah, you'll have to work it into your budget, right? As they all will. But I think he relatively. I think Peter pretty much. Well, that's what he told me. Shared, well, no, but I, I had conversations with him about it, and he essentially feels the same way that we should all just pay our bills. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you don't want to speak for him because I know he said he yeah. gave Sean his ideas. Right. Is that is that the last his ideas are what? Okay. Yeah, let's see the oh, let's see your picture. Wait for the last picture. Oh, sorry. There's the last Yay. picture. The I first picture beautiful. was from, as I say, from, a, I believe, a drone, but a, the fire tower is at the top of that mountain. That's Cane Mountain. And the, the fire tower is there. It's no longer functional, although you can climb up, and the view is incredible on a day when you have a 60-mile visibility, mm -hmm. and there are days like that in the Adirondacks. This view is from our dock to, toward the fire oh, tower. Oh, so you're looking nice. the opposite direction. Oh, it's oh, only nice. from your dock. Only from the dock. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for. And now I know what I'm supposed to do. Now we'll see if I can accomplish it. And now you can go back and say, I already told you. Well, I did tell them. I forewarned them, but I also said I am going to go to the bull 